Nice to see all of you. Uh, Charles, thanks for starting this off so well, and uh, the presentations I think all have set the framework for what we're going to talk about with Michael. Do you have a presentation? I do. You do. Michael does have a presentation. I'll set it up by saying that uh, I've known Michael for maybe a decade, maybe, maybe more than maybe that, more. maybe a decade and a half, and I think of Michael as truly one of the innovators in this space. Um, he has the um, insight, he has, a curi he has amazing curiosity, and I think that's really one of the things that establishes Michael as a leader in this industry. He is always curious about new businesses. He comes to California, he's always calling me, what new businesses have you seen, what do you, what do you think about this? His curiosity, I think, is what separates him and his company from, from a lot of others in the space. And uh, he's going to talk about rebranding, I think, right? I do. Yep. He's going to talk about rebranding. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Michael Oshman and give him a nice warm uh, round of applause. Thank you, and thank you also for inviting me. Um, it's very interesting to see out of the, the little um, talking uh, we could have yesterday and, and today that although I'm flying around half of the world, the problems, the opportunities, and also the challenges for the industry are pretty much the same. So I'm really happy to discuss it also uh, further along these days. How to rebrand a directory business. Um, I'll just give you a small uh, overview of our family of companies, maybe some first steps, and then uh, we go into detail what we have done and why we did it. This is how our company looks like. Um, there are many logos, and you see many brands on that. Um, those are five different areas. On the left side, traditional directory business. We see some radio, we see some classifieds, some book, and also some uh, digital, mostly vertical um, uh, companies. Michael, quickly, what would that slide look like? Have looked like when we first met? Um, I think those three would have been here. Those three. All of them, all of them, and none of them. None of them. Yeah. yeah none of them. So I think that that sort of speaks to where you're going. So thank God I was in here three years ago, and all of the the uh, companies I presented in here, the Taxi Dotti, the Speisekart, which is a restaurant menu, still alive and still growing. So I'm happy that um, I picked the right ones, and we're not talking about the ones who don't work. You know. um, we are a pure family company. Yep. Um, the curiosity is not my fault, it's my great-grandfather, who was uh, the curious guy. Uh, he founded the company when he was 65, and he was just into sales. Yeah, and um, all my father uh, gave to my, sister, uh, uh, to my uh, um, sister and me was being a salesperson, being curious, and really trying to evolve business. And therefore, we try to really um, focus on what we are doing. We are the largest directory publisher in Germany, it's more than 2,000 employees little radio stations, some digital companies, and still curious to build new businesses. That's why um, there's still a lot to do. Um, you saw a lot of the, the new companies. But on the other hand, we were just able to get into the new companies because a lot of people are working in our traditional uh, services and allow us to invest into those new companies. So we've got, an, as being a family company, we not only got the ability, but also the responsibility to focus on those people who allow us to invest in other ventures to transform their business into a better future. And I think we mentioned a lot of the search industry trends uh, so far. There's, um, churn is not that big problem in our industry, but it's new customers. Um, the, the basket size to, to incentivize uh, the salesperson is uh, growing too slowly. They have to go uh, several times to those um, uh, to those customers, and I think also uh, the new ecosystems, which are replacing the old distribution channels, is something which is similar in every uh, part of the world. It's the app stores of the world, the play stores, the Googles, the messenger services, which will be very very interesting in my mind, and it's also the sensors, because coming back to new business models. The sensors are going to be one of the very critical stuff. You can see, for example, um, um, uh, there are, I think, 12 uh, sensors within uh, the iPhone. And you can see how it moves, how it shakes, in which location it is. And you can build out services just out taking all the, the, the data out of those sensors and trying to build services around them. 
The new business model is also being mentioned. There's transactional, there's on-demand services, uh, and there's also um, in the directory business that you really can visit and upsell the customers several times due to the fact um, that uh, in the first models they were just on the listing system. But if we look, the penguins who are on this very big eyes, sometimes if you just look on your own um, uh, where you are standing, uh, sometimes the eyes get a little bit thinner. And um, I think you also have to commit to change um, your business, not just um, see what the others are doing or just to your own food. And this is one of the pictures I really like a lot because I think uh, you should try to get off this ice uh, before it really melts down and then you fall just on the hot stone. Our first trial was very unsuccessful. We said we are a perfect company, everything's in place, we got the salesperson. The only thing we should do is let's add some more products. And it's definitely not the fault of all those products because they are perfect products. But the trial to put um, uh, such a, a wheel on a horse doesn't make it a fast car. So our problem was we got a perfect product portfolio, but it didn't sell. Or, it, or at least it didn't sell very good. The second thing was we thought, ah, we are a sales company. Let's try to integrate it into our incentive scheme and in incentivize a little bit harder. Then it went a little bit better, but it was no success. It was just a little bit an add-on. And we really fell into a little pain and um, also a little bit panic and said, this is not going the right way. If we want to really be successful in our, in our directory business, we have to change a little bit more fundamentally. But how? We use the product, we use the sales incentives, what else can you change? And then we got back, we saw what, our, what do our customers think of us? And they still think we are selling print yellow page ads. No matter how many, many times we try that, we are being focused on print yellow page ads. What do our employees think? They got a little bit panicked because most of them, we are a stable business. And they say, now this thing of internet, maybe it's going to go away. As many of us know, this will likely not be the case anymore. I think it's going to stay. And the thing is, if you say, if, if, you, if you don't, um, uh, are folks not for, on, on change, then you get into a fear position. And I think fear and hope is not a very good strategy for a business. So we have to really focus on our, our employees because we, as the family entrepreneurs, we want to go into this bright future. And we really have to bring all of them on board. And again, we are not the big, bigger fans of really um, taking out a lot of the people and replacing them. We try to change them and really help them to change because they are the ones who let us invest into the new ventures as well. So we try to define with a group inside of our publishing houses, um, pillars of transformation. Frequency, we say it's not enough to be once in a year at our customer. We want to have real-time sales and we want to have real-time production. This differs a lot because in our operation, and referring back to Paul, it used to be that if something doesn't work today, you can do it tomorrow or the next week because the book is being published just once a year. Right now, we said we don't want to be able to publish it twice a year or three times a year. We want to immediately publish a book and also publish a database um, within seconds. So all the processes we have to redefine so that we can really put them online in the second where they are because in the moment when the customer bought something and he gets the immediate result either on print or on, on digital then he's satisfied immediately and we don't have to do so much customer calls then we can, uh, because then we can upsell. So it's easier for us really to be in the real-time world. And we also, um, it's possible for us right now with our production uh, services that we can produce a book 
um, out of different regions which the customer can put, uh, can, can pick. He can integrate um, all the menu cards, um, he can exclude some, um, some sections of the book and he can have it in within 20 seconds um, on, on, on a PDF and uh, also in production uh, being sent by post within two days, which amounts he wants. Second one, um, we are not talking about products. We want to have the, the, the offering is the, uh, is, is the place where uh, the customer and the, uh, the salesperson decide whether it's easy to buy or not easy to buy. Um, we have an organization review and this is special for us. We had um, about 12 uh, several separate um, publishing houses within Germany and we um, let them under a different brand because we don't want to get re be recognized as that big. That was a hard decision for ourselves to say we have to really unite those publishing houses, not being them separate, but really to, to focus on, uh, on more scalability, which is more important in the uh, real-time uh, sales environment. So it, it will be one localized uh, enterprise from the outside. Then we killed the publishing term. We don't want to be publisher anymore because I think this puts us away the focus what we really are. We want to sell. The great grandfather was a salesperson. We want to be in sales. We don't want to publish. Our editors are just um, dealing with addresses. This is not a editor's stuff. Yeah? We kill totally the publisher within our name. And we want to go from the uh, yellow page search, not to um, communication and, and advertising, but we want to go into the marketing because we see that the amount of or the percentage of advertising within the GDP is not rising, it's shrinking. So we have to go into solutions. We don't have to want to be recognized just as an advertising company. We want to put a little bit uh, one step further. And distribution, I think, online, offline, this is obvious. But some of our customers still don't get it that we're not just doing the, um, uh, the, the print directories. Um, performance measurement, I think, is also good. Talking about people and not about machines, I think a, a process um, is very, very important. You have to get all people on board because either the whole company changes or nothing changes. So we set, we set a necessity to change. That's a bit, little bit hard because you have to bring people out of their comfort zone and some really are fearing getting out of their comfort zone. So you really have to be very, very careful bringing them out of their comfort zone because they uh, uh, would struggle. So you need to have to express where are we going and it has to be very, very precise where do we have to go and with, with, uh, with uh, what team do we want to achieve this. So we said very clearly those are the future leaders within our publishing house. And so people can get the goal and they can get the people who they can ask um, how does um, the, the, the management think where, which way we should go. Then we need a, a, a timeline everybody agrees on and this timeline is for someone who is curious and um, doesn't have time, very hard to, to get. It was more than one year that we took those timelines, but everybody um, said this is our timeline, and so we are all on the same track. And, and again, it's the execution. Those are just the PowerPoints, the work has to be done on the people, in the minds of the people. Um, one small thing, there's a new logo, but this is not the, the most important part. Um, we are dealing with a lot of logos, so the Müller Medien Unternehmensfamilie, this is the, the, uh, which we all do, this is the directory brands, we are doing this very successfully with a lot of other publishers in Germany, but this is a common sense thing, so we can't change a lot in those yellow pages, white pages, local white pages. So when we want to differentiate, we have to start with ourselves and we will have a, a new brand um, next uh, Monday. And um, those are the brands which are existing right now in the market. So this is just a variety. You see those are pretty much the same in, in look and feel, but they are not the same and they are totally just local. And the product services, we won't uh, touch that in that moment. Um, but uh, in here, <coughs> this has to be simplified. This is the area where we are talking. To know where to go is an interesting and good stuff. But you can't forget to see where you're from. You can't deny your own values, which made you successful, and you shouldn't destroy all of them. 
So we had to analyze, and I'll flip through this a little bit quicker, um, what are the, the, the main um, pillars of success of the past and what could give us a positive and competitive advantage and differentiation and uniqueness to fill out the number one position in the minds of our customers. And that's also a little bit quicker because this is being done in, in your company. Those could be totally different. Yeah? But I think it's very, very important that you focus on what the people think makes them successful in the past so they can build on, on the future goals. So we have been um, sales focused. We've, we are a family company. Uh, we try to be very entrepreneurial. We have a culture of that you can make mistakes and, unless uh, you really try to do something. Um, we seem to be very sol solid and we seem to be very locally. So we try to go, go into this um, uh, goal and say, what is our positioning statement? We want to have a number one position. Um, this was also culturally a little bit difficult, but I think it makes sense. As you know, the number one um, or the highest mountain in, in the world, I think it's going to be difficult to know the number two or number three, so it's much easier really to go after the number one the positioning statement. I think we should be the number one local marketing solution for SMEs, and that uh, we can make sure that the client, that we can do it together with the client to establish a um, successful business. And you is the everyday because we don't want to be really just integrated once a year, we want to be every day, and so we want to be the number one for successful business contents. And there's a one word equity as well, and this is a little bit bad because it's two words in English. Uh, in, in German, it means you're, you're very, very strong in sales. Some of the people uh, inside of our company refrain from that because they ah, we are just doing the ads. We, are, we don't want to be that pushy. We don't want to be that big in sales. And then we try to really, in this, in this focus group, develop something that it's not just to, to sell something to somebody, it's also to make them strong, that they sell better. And then suddenly all the, the production department started thinking about what's my role in this, in this selling process. And that was a very, very, very interesting uh, uh, point to see. And uh, at the end of those um, process, we totally wiped out one word, it's, we don't have any production service anymore. We have an onboarding and upselling service. So all the people who are used to be in the production service right now are in the upselling service. So brand rules, I think this is something where everybody could say, um, how are we going to behave um, um, in the future? Um, uh, is it sales focused? Does it help our clients to increase his revenue? Is it measurable? And it's also scalable. That's very important for us. Um, is it a really top um, um, performance? Do they benefit from it? Um, can we, uh, is it related somehow with our new brand? Is it going to get viral? This is also something very new. Are we going to talk about success with our customers and within the company? And could we stay still uh, solid and can we fulfill our promises? As said, this is PowerPoint. And the most important part is really to, to bring it into diffusion within the, um, uh, within the company. And this is um, something um, um, which really makes us a lot think. And I had a talk with Eric Schmidt. I don't know, are you familiar with Eric Schmidt? Yeah. Former CEO of, of Google. And I asked, I said, Eric, I've got a, a challenge to do. Uh, we have to transform our fellness, uh, family business. What would you recommend to do? What would you be, if you could say, the one sentence I should do. And he said, create passion. And I think this is really the thing, if you're going into a sales company, you have to create that, fa that passion. And I think the attitude, to change the attitude towards more sales is something which makes the big difference. So we had um, integrated uh, the whole um, uh, owner's family, we had the brand ambassadors, we have the employees, and we also, and this is going to be the next big step, then we are now going to integrate also the customers. This is the new brand, and this starts to be my really big problem. You saw my system in the first slide. Um, and, we, and I mentioned that we had one year in planning, and we missed this one year in planning by one week. Unfortunately, we are going to release the new brand on Monday. So I could either um, interfere with you or with my system. And so I choose not to uh, really get angry with my system, uh, because I have to uh, really 
uh, this is a lot of her work uh, to do, so I can't release the name, but at least I can, I can do the symbol and I can say our, our new slogan, which uh, says, we are helping selling. So this is the On the other hand, I mentioned it's not the logo, which is really the most important stuff. It has to be inside. It has to be inside of every of our um, uh, uh, members inside of those family mm -hmm. publishers. And if we don't really try to, to put on the sun in everybody's mind, and everybody's doing, then um, we will never succeed in really convincing our customers that we are the number one for marketing solutions within their, um, uh, within their, their business. This gives us a new challenge, and I think um, this is going to be very, very interesting how we are uh, doing this together with our customers, because we are not just focusing on um, salespersons which are um, trying to convince in the first week. We also have to really improve on the onboarding stuff and we got some good hints out of our um, internet startups. Uh, one, uh, one number maybe, um, we had one business where we, uh, if we wouldn't be able to put them online within 14 days, 50% of those people who already signed a contract would churn. So we definitely have to decrease the time when they are online, and uh, our goal is really to have this within seconds. This is going to be a, a, a mobile business optimizer. I think um, it's not that um, uh, uh, high tech than uh, we saw with Camillo, but Germans are not that high tech, we think. Uh, <laughs> but let's see how, how it works out. We're just focusing on two different KPIs, and um, um, so it's, it's just a guess at the moment. Let's see what will happen. Focus is very um, uh, vital right now. We focused on our inside, we'll focus on our outside. We are going to get into dialogues very, very heavily with our uh, customers and will be not only through our salesperson, but also digitally and it will be a lot of telesales. So we did some investments, we bought two companies on the telesales side, founded a third one, um, set up some um, special services. But the main, the main uh, uh, reason for this transformation is to put the whole publishing environment which we have um, into this new area. Why I'm here? I think we got some ideas and we can discuss it with him, we can discuss it with our customers. Um, we've got a small experience group within Europe, sometimes some, some US people are also part of that. It's always around the, uh, the Zinda conference, I think you find a small um, uh, uh, card on, on your place. Next one, I think, will be in, in April in, um, in London. Yeah. Uh, and we also try to sit together and really exchange a um, little bit KPIs. Um, it's a nice round, so everybody who wants to join that, just uh, give me uh, his card and we can um, really discuss how we can integrate you also in those exchanges. So I thank you very much for having me, and I hope uh, I didn't uh, really put too much time away from your lunch. Thank you. So do we have time for a QA, and a Charlie? Yeah, you do. Okay, so I have some questions, Mike. How long have you been on this journey to transform the business? Um, regarding the publishing houses, I think the, the, the real process is one year. So, you, so just a year ago, you decided you had to transform your business? That hard. Yeah, we tried, we tried first, we tried to reintegrate another product, another product, uh -huh. set up two new startups, do some verticals. So you tried to do sort of incremental transformation yeah. for a while. Yeah. And you decided it didn't work. No, it wouldn't yeah. work. Okay. So, so a year, right? Yeah. So I, I see you at a lot of conferences. Um, you know, I know that you're in California a lot. I know you're, you know, you, you're, you're a global traveler. So, for over this year, how much time did you spend on sort of all the work to make this happen? Because a lot of it seems like it's, it's sort of employee side stuff. That's a, that's a very, very good question. And that's the beauty of our family. So, my sister is much more precise and much more hands-on than well, I they am. like her better. So the employees so like her better. <laughs> no. Well, she's prettier. She's prettier. <laughs> no, she's I, funnier. She's funnier, yeah. yeah. And and this is this is really the beauty of, of being a family company that you can uh, really play different roles. 
So she's so, she's the inside person, and you're yeah, the outside yeah. person. Yeah, she does all the work, uh -huh. and I'm and you just get all the glory. Some, some input. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so your sister spent a lot of time. On yes, it. yeah, it was her main project. Um, over the last five years, how many people have left the family, the company? Would you say? I mean, because you know we can talk about changing people's attitudes all the time, and at a certain point, they're just people who are going to have to decide that they're not fit for that new culture, that new environment, don't have the passion in their gut to be the performers. So could you give us a sense of how many people have left? It's, it's less than 5%. Less than 5% have left in five years. Yeah, we're, not, we're not talking about um, the, the traditional sales um, uh, churn. We yeah. have 10 to 15 percent. Uh -huh. When we talk about key personnel, I think it's less than five percent. Uh -huh. And this is the hard work because they, they uh, if you've got people who really try to change and just don't find a, a way to change in the beginning, but they've got the attitude, uh -huh. then we take our time really to try to turn them around and give them a, a good attitude on that side. That's, that's an amazing statistic. But that's a, it's, a family, it's a family business stuff. Yeah, but, but, but even so, I mean, they, there are a lot of people who have worked there a long time, who have been very um, accustomed to the way they, yeah. they do stuff. Yeah. And it, to do sort of behavioral change is very, very challenging. And, and to only lose 5% over that time, or even 10% over that time, is astounding to me. Okay, we must have some questions. Manish. Manish? So, um, so with respect to uh, trust at every touch point, uh, and since Neil asked about it's all internal, yep. tell me about uh, the culture of exposing things like salaries to uh, changing policies like vacation, unlimited vacation to other types of things that some, somewhat in the United States at least are seen as yep. progressive. Yep. Um, how does that play with respect to changing culture and things like that you've tried to do? Uh, that's, that's a perfect question. Um, we don't publish the salaries. Um, uh, this is um, in Germany. Maybe hasn't got the, the uh, a tradition of publishing salaries, so we don't have to do that on, on that side. Um, but it's the small things um, which have to have to change. And um, we also we, we struggled in, on, on um, one hand. Really, should we have ties or not? Yeah, that's, those are the <laughs> the things which are uh, uh, difficult. And right now, we in, in all of our startups. We, we are not using the, the C, or so we are, we are using the, 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 the first name. Within our publishing houses, right at the moment, we are using uh, the, the last names. So this is uh, really also something where we have to um, uh, really do it very, very slowly. So the road goes um, more towards the first name, but this is something it has to come out of the, 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 uh, the team, and it starts right now. And they get more and more involved and take over uh, what they think they should change. But salaries, we don't publish that. Uh, are you using your um, recruiting new people into the company? Um, how are you positioning the company differently than maybe you would have five years ago? Um, we've got a, we are not using, or we didn't use very heavily the, 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 the Yellow Page um, publishing brand for recruiting people other than uh, the salespeople. For, for, yeah. So we, we use um, the, the big family company brand. So we, that's the brand? That's a brand for, for um, partnering. And that's uh -huh. the brand for recruiting. Uh -huh. yeah. so, so we were shy on, on recruiting on, on the publishing house. So you can see that something has to change. Yeah. Michael, uh, there's been a, a number of uh, directory companies around the world that have rebranded using, you know, we know the names, Haibu, et cetera. What lessons have you learned from those not always successful experience. I, I don't know. I, I don't know much enough how they did it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I think. Um, they they made an agency well, it, 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 actually, they've spent a lot of money on agencies that pick the name out of the Esperanto yeah. dictionary. I think. That's right. <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's, so in a number of cases, they've you know, gone back to local brands. You know, uh, at least at the street level, because the the corporate. I think one of the lessons is that it's very expensive to create a new identity with a brand. And I guess if you thought through how much investment you're going to have to do on, on the marketing side. So my first view was, hey, 
let's do a new logo, everything's fine. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah? And, then, and then we dig a little bit deeper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's all you need is a new logo, isn't it? <laughs> it, would, it would have been very much cheaper yeah, to do it like that way. But we wouldn't have really get into the minds of our people. And we, we really want to, to be in a group and, and really uh, go into those new digital uh, ages. So is the new logo that we saw, that's what we saw. We yeah. saw the new logo, but it's not the new brain. Yeah. yeah. So we saw that. So your sister is okay share, sharing the new logo. I didn't tell her. Oh, you didn't tell her. <laughs> but please don't. Please don't publish it. <laughs> is that going to be the 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 Euler logo too? Or are you changing that logo? That's the, with the M. No, this this stays because this is more so that's for the, the radio. Uber logo, yeah, yeah. and then yeah. this is yeah. the logo for, for the directory. For the directory, directory. not the not the taxi. No. no, no, no. So they'll all keep their individual they, brands. Yeah. Taxi.de will be the same as Spicercarte, as Twargo, as So the, the new consumer. logo is for the directory. Business. Just directories. Okay. okay. But for the consumer, the, the consumer is still consuming the individual product brands, correct? Yes. This is just for the SMBs, and uh, Germany is very very complex. So we there's a lot of. Our, uh, our companies uh, who are running together the yellow pages, the white pages, the local white pages. Yeah. And those brands are staying and they're, they're being yeah. developed within, with the other ones. Yeah. But this is, in our view, this is going to be harder really to develop those brands. Um, and there we are a little bit, uh, we want to be a little bit faster. So on the SMB side, we'll uh, Can we go back stuff. to the picture of that logo? The new one. The new one. Here. It's like the Superman one. <laughs> so now you so now we get a focus we can do a focus group. Are you gonna have t-shirts for us at the end of this? He's already got one. He's wearing it. Do you have a t-shirt on? Will this be a tattoo that the young people, the new people coming into the company get? No, Neil, it was one of the questions. Would I personally walk through uh, the city with a t-shirt just with this logo uh -huh. and the new name on it. Yeah. And I would. You that would. Was, that would. That would be my test. Yeah. I'm not yeah. so sure if I would walk through um, the, the, the city just with a t-shirt with the old logo, uh -huh. and the old name. Uh -huh. And that was the personal test for me whether I stick to this brand or not. Yeah. These look like hands helping each other. I think it looks like an S. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the hand stuff yeah. as well. Yeah. We should I don't overthink it. Yeah. The hands is pretty good, right? Here's one hand, yeah. and here's the other hand. That's, yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Hands helping each other, that's what you're really about. Yeah. It's more than charity than sales. That's good. Oh, S is for sales. That's for sales. This is for sale. Now, what does that say down there? We have for Kaufen means we help selling. We help selling. So that that's for internal as well as external. Yeah. So our internal stuff always has to see how can I support the person who is in contact with the uh, with the customer. What's my personal take today? What did I do today to help the tele sales the uh, the salesperson to help? What's this here? Uh, is that the marked out that's, one? That's, that's, the, the, yeah, yeah. that's the name we can. That's the name we can't. Yeah. Yeah. We can't. Okay. That's so there's no, yeah. there's no one, uh, there's no decipher here to help us decipher that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so how much, how much time did you spend? Did you personally spend with your sister on this? A lot? Or did she? Yeah. Yeah. Six months to figure this out. Um, I think we, uh, the interesting stuff is we, we took a. Um, a from an agency by a consulting company, which is very unusual for us. We don't buy consulting com companies. No, I never, I never <laughs> figured that out, Michael. <laughs> but this, like, we, we I've never it. heard such. I guess you are transforming. Fixers, <laughs> there. Uh, and so, um, um, but the, the, the final version and the final stuff has been picked by a group. It wasn't uh -huh. my sister and me or my father. It was really the group, and we had several different versions, uh -huh. and it was a majority vote. Uh -huh. yeah. And I, I wasn't always um, the same, the same opinion as the group. But so that's you have a new rule. You have one vote. I just have one vote in this case. Yeah. In this case. <laughs> Do we have any other questions in the back?
No more questions? I think, Michael, I, you know, you know, I, I, I do applaud your curiosity. It's, it's, it's really something um, that I don't see in a lot of industry leaders out there, is, is your, your personal curiosity about what's going on. And I think it's really why you've been able to uh, move forward. Uh, how old's the business? Um, it's been founded uh, 1950 by the 65 year old. So 1950, 2015, that's 65 years, I think? That's what you just said. Yeah. It's, it's, it's no, it was founded by a 65 year old, 65 years ago.